So this standard applies to coats, and when we say coats, it includes jackets, shirt jack suits, tops, bush jackets. It applies to dresses, blouses, skirts, trousers, including shorts and culottes, sleepwear, including pajamas, night gowns, and I said in a class, teddies, and the people were asking me, what? Everybody know what a teddy is? Yes? Anybody doesn't know? Tell her in your spare time, all right? <laughs> and give her a clear description. <laughs> foundation garments. Some of us do foundation garments, specific. Swimwear, and I saw swimmer outside, and crocheted garments. Now, where you see that number up there is the clause in the standard, but don't worry about it because you can buy the standard and it will explain, right? Now, when we talk about the grain or yarn direction, I don't need to explain that, right? We have the lengthwise grays, the crosswise, yes, and the diagonal or bias. Now, your grain, this is garment construction 101. You should always cut on the straight of grain unless the design dictates otherwise. So the main parts of your garment on the straight of grain. If you have a yoke at the back of a shirt, you will have the straight of grain going in this direction. So what it says is that your grain should always be perpendicular, cutting on the lengthwise grain. The crosswise grain should be parallel. The grain should be consistent, except where the design dictates a different grain. Now, many times you see garments and you realize they're off grain. And you know where you see it in particular? In knits and things like sweatsuits and sweatpants so you put, and jeans. You put it on and the leg turning inside or outside and you have no idea why. It's cut on the wrong grain. The silhouette lines should follow the lines of the body. Um, and I was talking to somebody outside and I'm saying, you can enhance or distract from by the lines in the garment. I think we all know if you put lines like this, it shortens, especially if you cut the body in half. When we work with fuller figures, we say put perpendicular lines, let your stripes go up and down because your eyes follow the line and if your eyes follow the line it tends to break up the proportions and make it look smaller and who doesn't want to look smaller don't answer the vertical side seams shall divide the body in half and this is the vertical side seam except where otherwise as when you have a forward or back shifted seam you have forward side seams on like jackets where the side seam is and added to the back so it comes all the way here, yes? We clear on that. Ease on the garment. Garment shall have adequate ease. It should be free from wrinkles that draw the garment, which you have too little ease, and free from wrinkles that lie in folds when you have too much ease. In other words, size the garments correctly. Balance, and when we talk about balance, and I'm sounding as if I'm teaching a design class here, we say in the garment should be proportionately balanced the right side and the left side should be the same except where you have asymmetrical lines or you have asymmetrical balance so when you have one side bigger than the other for example when you have like an overlap or a wrap skirt or something we're talking about the asymmetric balance so it should be equal from right to left from top, top to bottom and front to back except where asymmetrical balance is intended overall smoothness so what i have in capitals is the clause that specifies the requirements for quality 
in the manufacturing of the garments, yes? Garments shall be smooth on the body. It should enhance the appearance of the wearer. Now, that might be a little... <laughs> but, and it should complement the style of the wearer as it pertains to line, color, and design. Now, if you are doing manufacturing for retail, it is something that you have to bear in mind. If you are doing custom work, it might be easier because you're one on one in with your customer. So where does your personal design aesthetic come in? And that is where some people are able to really make an impact. Seeing a color or a fabric that somebody else will look at it and go, eh. but you see it and you see possibilities. And that is where the really great designer can um, rise to the top as opposed to somebody who go in by the book. So the rules are there. But you know what we say? You could break the rules. You know, we used to say you don't match stripes and dots, polka dots. If you, anybody know that? So you're trying to tell him it's my age? That's what we used to say. If you get one of the old design books, it tells you you don't mix stripes and you don't mix the size of stripes. Look at what is happening now. The skirt is a bigger stripe and the top is a smaller stripe or you mix them throughout the garment, but it must be aesthetically pleasing. Now I know that could be left to the eyes of the particular person and sometimes they say, well, you wonder what they see that you didn't and that's okay. But in terms of the style complementing the wearer in terms of line, color and design, that becomes a little bit of a personal perspective and choice. But you have to be mindful, like I say, if you're working with custom customers, it's one thing. But if you're working to put in a retail space, you have to kind of go middle of the road type of thread. When you go to buy thread, nobody can tell you about the weight or the denier, that is a dirty word because they will ask what you're talking about, or the type of thread. So everybody buying the same thread down the road, I wouldn't say where, and they're using polyester thread to sew linen. And what happens? Your polyester thread is thermoplastic. Your linen needs a hot iron. And when you use the hot iron to smooth your linen, it melts the thread and your garment parts come apart. I had a colleague who came asking me what happened here and I was laughing. I wasn't being very kind and I further hold the sleeve and it came off because he used the hot iron to iron the white linen shirt. So I was asked earlier, <laughs> what is the responsibility of the TTBS? in terms of what happens at retail. So I'll put somebody on the spot, but so when you go to the store, how do you know that what they're telling you is correct? It is worth it for you to spend $150 to verify your fiber content as opposed to buying blind. And I will say this, in some cases, because the fiber has already been tested on a particular fabric, you may be even able to have somebody in authority tell you, this is what this is without charging you for testing. But the onus is on you because once you put on the label with a fiber content declaration and either your name and address or your business name, the responsibility is yours. So if you put 100% linen on a jacket, and because I can read well and follow instructions, and I turn my iron up to the highest setting that says linen, and I get a hold the shape of the iron on my jacket, you owe me a jacket. And if you're not going to make good, I'm going to go down to consumer affairs <laughs> for you, and consumer affairs will send it up to the TTBS, and you're going to have to do something about it. And I'm saying that to say the responsibility is yours. So it's the, the, what happens in the market is not as 
well thought out maybe as it should be but that's where we are at present and it has to do with generally how we see the discipline and the sector and I make no apologies for saying that so the type of thread should be appropriate both to the fabric and the seam and the thread shall be color fast meaning it should not run and the color should be matched to the fabric unless a contrasting or translucent thread is desired or specified. Stitch density. How many stitches per inch or per centimeter? And for some people, that is not even a thought. You see stitches that are too far apart or too close together and it causes the fabric to pucker. The standard specifies a minimum stitch density for top stitching and for assembly. Pressing, really important. And even if you hand pressing in your back bedroom, using your ironing board and iron, you have to ensure that you use an appropriate heat for the fabric and for the style. And there are some pressing aids that will help you. Things like your seam pressers, yeah? Your sleeve boards, and some people might wonder what is she talking about? And your tailor's ham that will help you to round out your sleeves. The press smith so that you can put it on your hand and press the tiny areas because when you offer your garments for sale, there is something we refer to as hanger appeal. What will make me want to go closer to the garment to examine it with a thought to buy? And if it doesn't have that appeal, the customer is going to walk away, which is why we say know your garment so you know if it, has to be, if it will be displayed on a hanger or if you need to put it on a dress form. Because some things have no hanger appeal, you have to see it on a simulated body. You shall ensure that your pressing gives symmetrical creases where applicable, like on your trousers. And some people press the trousers badly. The seams are different on each leg. There shall be no distortion of the finished shape and the original appearance of the fabric shall be maintained. Especially, and when it comes to labeling, and I'll talk about that, you have to be sure that the care instructions on your label are suitable for the main fabric of the garment. And if your garment is composite fabrics, you have to specify the temperature for both. In terms of the appearance, neat and free from spots, based in threads and construction markings shall be removed. And if you think that that is, everybody knows that, think again. I have seen a wedding dress where, and it's a shop in a mall, use blue chalk on white satin. So of course, you couldn't erase totally the blue chalk. And then to tell you how much more ridiculous we can get, the design had a sleeve out of a knit. So the, the shade of the knit and the shade of the dress didn't match. And somebody decided instead of stitching on the beads, they use a glue gun. Mm -mm. So when the lady pulled the sleeve up, the beads started popping off. You understand why, why some people will say they'd rather go purchase in the store? Now in terms of the shading, there shall be no shading between garment panels or components unless required by the design, which takes me back to the question of the quality of fabric. When you buy in merchantable seconds, and I said you can use them if you know what you're doing, you have to be sure that when you cut in garment parts that they match up in terms of the color shading because sometimes you have different dye lots in the same fabric. And when I say dye lots, they dyed at different times. And if the chemistry of the dye stuff was not 
critically managed at the quality control sa stage, you can have minor variations. And you know when you see that? When you send things to dry clean and they come back like the top come back one color and the skirt have a slightly different color and your argument was it's the same fabric, it looked like the same fabric, the chemistry of the dyes used were different. When not presented on a hanger, garment shall be neatly and uniformly folded for final presentation and storage and any pins used shall be non-corrosive. And again, you will think, but that is elementary, not always so. So the standard, if you use the standard as a guide, and, and I will give you a challenge. Take one of your garments when you buy the standard on Monday, in terms of the appearance, there shall be no noticeable fabric defects. For, do a self-assessment. Get the standard and go through the clauses of the standard item by item using your garment as the test piece. And be critical of yourself because it will tell you where you need to pay attention. Because in some cases, you have people who do the work for you. So when you see what the flaws are, then you can start writing a simple spec sheet in terms of what is required. Seams shall be half inch, right? So I'm saying fabric defects should not be on exposed part of the garments. Minor defects shall be permitted where these defects are not visible during normal wear. So when you're doing custom work, you could put the little faded part on the face and I do that all the time. So I buy it knowing that there are flaws, but I know where I'm going to use it. And that's when I'm doing it for myself, not for a customer. Hand stitching shall be even. The stitch length and the tension should be appropriate. And the ends of hand finished seams shall be securely fastened. And that's not only for hand finished seams buttons, buttonholes, and things like that. Bar tacking. We all know what is bar tacking. Belts should be flat, should be interface, should be uniform in shape, especially you see a curve that end up not being a curve and an angle where one side of the angle is different to the other. You see it all the time. Belts and closures shall be appropriate, durable, secure, and non-corrosive. And when you have belts on a garment, should be fitted in loops that cover the waistband that have sufficient overlap over the waist size. Saying, the waistband should have either overlap or underlap. That will allow you, because most of us have a tendency to go a up and a down. You don't mind when you go down, but you have issues when you go up. So to be able to make adjustments on waistbands. And the same goes for things like when you apply zippers, you want to have either an overlap or an underlap. The standard looks at buckles, blind stitching, and when I talk about blind stitching, particularly on hems, I went to a fashion show and the only thing, and it's amazing how we see all the flaws, because it jumps out at you. The dress was shiny and all I was seeing was the ridge on the hem, because they use more than likely a cover stitch, and the cover stitch, because of the weight of the fabric, gave a ridge all along the hem and that's all I saw and I'm sure I was not the only one who saw that now it could have been that it wasn't pressed well and again we have to look at pressing if you go into hand press with your domestic iron or if you're going to invest in a Hoffman if you do enough work and the kind of work like for gentlemen's clothes you know you do it out luncheon for, for the year and you invest in a Huffman. No, I'm being realistic. You have to do one thing, do it out one thing to get another, you know. Buy a good steam iron and not only that, make sure that you have the other pressing aids, a press cloth. So important. I tell people at home, I cannot see how you're not going to use a press cloth. I have a diaper attached to my ironing board with a safety pin. Because I'm cheap and my clothes have to last long. You need to press on the wrong side. I told somebody that and she was like, why? And I know she didn't press on the wrong side because all her clothes are shiny. 
and people don't understand once you have a thermoplastic most of our men's trousers are polyester or a blend of polyester if you use an iron on the cotton setting it will melt the surface fibers cause it to get shiny and it looks dull so you need to use a press cloth and free advice here if you press polyester once you don't have to press it again wash it and hang it on the line on a hanger yeah good which goes back to this afternoon when we'll talk about labeling the information that you put on your label and that information has to be based on the fiber content so you have to know the behavior of your fibers braids lace motifs and other embellishments they should be correctly and neatly attached they should be color fast and this one is really important match the body fabric with respect to shrinkage i saw a navy suit with a lovely rickrack braid on the collar and on the cuff of the suit but the suit was gathered up and the, the sleeve was gathered up and the color was gathered up because both fabrics had different dimensional stability properties so the braid was a hundred percent cotton which will shrink the jacket was polyester and rayon which did not so it spoiled the entire look the fact that the person continued to wear it told me she didn't understand or she wasn't she didn't care but for somebody who knows if you did that for somebody with your ttbs number or your brand name on it they're coming for you bound buttonholes well we're not seeing a lot of this except you're doing couture work and you have customers who are willing to pay nothing makes a garment like a bound buttonhole yeah or a bound pocket but because we try to do it fast and we think bound buttonholes and pockets unless we have the equipment is going to take too much time the corners shall be square the lips of the bound buttonholes the binding shall be even and a lot of times we can't meet that criteria they shall meet at the center of the opening the facing shall be securely and neatly attached and the external area of the buttonhole shall be neat and flat many times you see people attempt to do bound buttonholes and it's fraying at the corners if you don't have the competence leave it alone but you could practice while you're going along because that's how you're going to get better um i spoke to somebody who told me they didn't know how to put on an invisible zipper a designer he told me he was a designer and he didn't know how to put on an invisible zipper and that bothered me because if you don't know how to do it the person who is doing it for you could give you anything and you will accept it and you know that is what we say so to the point that you don't know and listen this business is about constant growth you have to upgrade yourself constantly and even when you think you know because nothing stays a standard you learn as you go along i have been around for a while and i see something new in terms of quick finishing i go to stores not necessarily to buy but to see what there is and to look at how it's been finished and you see some techniques sometimes and i think hmm good and the next time i'm going to try it putting on and all in one facing back in the day i was taught one way to do it and then i went to a factory in india and i see them they were making sheath dresses and i watch them put the face in and them bad boys in no time pull it through pull it through done on the stitch doing it no other way so we have to be open to learning new things learning from each other and understanding that this business is about constant growth or and be able to take criticism see all criticism as constructive even when it might not have been intended to be constructive you change your mindset learn from it button holes the buttons should be suitable for the type of fabric another issue is making sure that your buttons are color fast or when you have metal findings that they are not going to react badly because i have no doubt of course i'm not going to put this in chlorine bleach but if you put chlorine bleach on this is going to turn black on these buttons so you don't just buy and sometimes we buy because the things are cheap and we buy quantities and we try to find uses for them it doesn't always work out to your benefit 
So you have to be sure that buttons are color fast. So when we're talking about how appropriate they are for the fabric and or the garment, color fastness is one of the issues. So it should have appropriate spacing for size of button and garment type, should be reinforced with interfacing or reinforcement buttons. And when I say reinforcement buttons, you know what I'm talking about? And some garments you put us instead of stitching it, especially if you have like a sheer fabric, you put a smaller button behind so you actually stitch in two buttons. Yes? Okay. It should be properly aligned. And when buttoned, the fabric should be completely flat and smooth. This is something that we need to pay attention to. When you button the garments up on the hanger, look at it and see whether it's smooth because that is what the customer is going to be seeing. Casings. Flat and smooth, no bulkiness. The stitching should be even. It should be even in width. And the width of the casing should allow the drawstring or the elastic to be inserted easily and stay in place. Big issue. Stripe checks, plaids, and one-way designs. One-way designs should all be facing the same direction. Need to pay attention. And when, when you did Garment Construction 101, you knew that when you're working with these special fabrics, you're going to use more fabric than if you're working with a plain fabric. Colors. Colors are a big issue. The use of wrong interfacing or no interfacing, bulkiness, seems not properly stitched. And one of the common things, the color facing peeping out from underneath. We know when you do your patterns, your under color is cut a clean smaller than the upper color, right? Everybody here know that yet. Because many times you see the under color peeping out and then the top stitching is not done properly. We need to pay attention. Only the top of the color should be visible. And if color stays are used, they should be inconspicuous. And let me put a disclaimer here. There is a misprint in the standard where it say color stays should be conspicuous. We know what the stays are, right? That we put in men's shirts. They should be in, you don't want to, you stitch it on the underside, not on the top side. So you shouldn't even know it's there because the color shouldn't lie nice and flat. Color stands, we know what the color stands are. Those of us who make men's shirts. We have one-piece collars and two-piece collars. When we have a two-piece collar, we have a collar stand, a collar and a collar stand, yes? Cuffs. Cuffs are an issue. They should be flat and smooth. The enclosed seams should be trimmed, should be interfaced. And if you use top stitching, make sure. That's big, big, big issue. When we did design we understand how to manipulate that, yes? So given the design, sometimes you have to determine where you're going to incorporate your dart because you can incorporate your dart in a seam while still having the shape. So sometimes what we need to do in the design is to determine how we can use the dart to get the shape without having the actual dart. So we talk about control of fullness and distribution of fullness. Are you going to use your darts in gathers, pleats? Are you going to throw your dart into a different style line? It is just things that we need to think about because the whole issue of design and construction is aimed at giving you garments that are aesthetically pleasing because most of us, we shop with our eyes and then engage the brain. Um, so like I say, I wouldn't be able to go through the entire standard because it's comprehensive. But what I want you to do is to avail yourself of a copy of the standard, as I said, and then use the standard as the yardstick to do a self-assessment of what you're producing. Edges. <coughs> All raw edges should be appropriately finished. And when I say appropriately, different weights of fabrics will require different finishing. Some fabrics can be overlocked. When you have very fine fabrics, you might have to choose a different seam, a French seam, for instance, 
or a turn and stitch finish. If you have a very heavy finish, if you're into men's overcoats and things like that, you may want to do a bound finish. You choose your finish based on the fabric that you are working with and the design. Facings. Facing should be flat and smooth. They should not be bulky. They should not pull or strain on the garment. Now, when you do your facings, you have an enclosed seam. And in Construction 101, you were taught to grade and clip or to notch, yes? So you have now, I know that, but sometimes when we see the things at retail, we wonder what happened. Now, your facings should be interface now the standard says if necessary but i don't think it's really if necessary should always your facing should always be interface and i knew where the discussion came from if the necessary is that sometimes you have very lightweight fabric that you don't want but we also and i'll tell you what the discussion was in our neck of the woods we don't have some things available like colored interfacing. How many times have you seen colored interfacing? Have you ever seen red, green, blue? All you know is white and black, right? Yeah. But you know that colored interfacing is available. Yeah. Good. But we don't have because we have business people um, who sell to manufacturers. So that, if necessary, came from the use of very lightweight share fabrics where the interfacings that are available may not be appropriate. Well, in that case, you can self-interface, use another layer of the fabric to interface because you want to add body and support to some areas of the garment.